Hello, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight. In this video, we're gonna take a close look at flip-flops, you know, the digital circuits that toggle things on and off. We'll cover the basics of what flip-flops are and what a simple flip-flop would look like as a discrete circuit on the breadboard, of course, blinking some LEDs. Then we'll look at some common types of flip-flops and their applications. And no video would be complete without building a few examples and taking a peek at the waveforms on an oscilloscope. There, made it through the entire intro without mentioning footwear. Now let's step into flip-flops. Diving into flip-flops, I have to make an assumption that you're already familiar with basic combinational logic, which would include AND gates, OR gates, NAND gates, exclusive OR gates, and the like. I won't spend much time on these, but I'll go ahead and leave these tables here if you want to reference back to them at any point. So a flip-flop allows you to do some interesting things. By combining some of these gates, we can construct things like a memory storage device or shift register that may take in parallel bits and rotate them out to be transmitted over a transmission line. Or maybe we can make an up-down counter circuit. These are just a few applications, but they have massive potential. In the examples today, we're going to use a 74 LS series logic ICs, which are 5 volt TTL compatible. Nowadays, these logic gates are implemented and integrated into various chips on a systems level basis or in software, so you don't really see discrete gates like this much anymore, but flip-flops are a fundamental topic in electronics, and you ain't gonna get away from it. The most basic flip-flop is the set, reset, or SR flip-flop. This type has two inputs, S for set and R for reset. There are also two outputs, Q and Q not. The SR flip-flop can be constructed by using what we call cross-coupled gates. We could use either cross-coupled NOR gates or cross-coupled NAND gates. They both have their own truth tables, and note that their outputs are slightly different. However, the NAND option requires some additional inverters, so we'll ignore that guy. What's going on under the hood, or bonnet if you're across the pond, is that if we place a logic one on the upper input and a logic zero on the lower input, the output of the upper NOR gate, Q0, is zero. And that feeds into the input of the lower NOR gate. So for the lower gate, since both inputs are low, its output, Q, will be a logic one. Recall back to the truth table for the NOR gate. Of course, if we reverse the inputs, the exact same logic holds true, but inverted. The key point of an SR flip-flop is that these input signals can be momentary, and the outputs react to this stimulus asynchronously, meaning the change happens almost instantly and without a clock signal. The last oddball and unused condition is when both inputs are high. In this case, the outputs will both be zero. And if you go from this state to both inputs low, or the holding condition, then you'll get unpredictable behavior. So that's just something to avoid, this two input high state. Here's an example of a transistorized version of a flip-flop, also having cross-coupled base and emitter. The idea is that when one base is driven high, the base emitter of the other transistor is reverse biased. By manipulating the set and reset inputs to each transistor, we get a similar flip-flop toggling action with only a momentary input. Okay, so here is our flip-flop circuit. You can see I've got two LEDs here, two transistors. I've got a couple of resistors here for the LEDs and a couple that are uh, con connected between each transistor. And the key point behind the SR flip-flop, as we already know, uh, if we apply a momentary pulse to either input of the base of the transistor, we can turn one or the other on or off. But these two resistors here are uh, cross-coupled, so the base is connected to the collector of one, the use one resistor, and the base is connected to uh, the other transistor uh, from base to collector here. We have resistors that are connected to the LEDs that are also connected to each collector, uh, and that's basically the circuit. So when we ground the base of one transistor, we're essentially turning it off and turning the other transistor on. One's forward biased, one's reverse biased, and you know we can switch between those two states. Okay. With this particular circuit, one of the transistors will always have a tendency to turn on before the other. And there are other things you can do to make it uh, so that you can predict which one will turn on uh, first uh, by adding capacitors or resistors. I'm not going to go through that here today. But this is the basic idea behind the flip-flop, is that we can apply a momentary signal and switch on and off, and it will latch the state. For contrast, I've also used half of a 74LSO2 quad NAND gate to construct the same circuit. Now if I swap the switch over to this circuit, you can see that it operates in basically the same manner. Set causes a set on Q output, and reset causes the LED to drop down low uh, in a reset condition. Up to this point, we've been talking strictly about set reset flip-flops in an asynchronous manner, which is to say the output changes in near real time with the inputs. But that's not really how computers and digital circuitry typically work. Usually there's some clock signal that synchronizes operations in a digital system. Without that, we'd have chaos. 
So we need a way to only allow our set reset flip-flop to change states when we want. If we take the cross-coupled NOR gate and link a couple of AND gates to their inputs, well, then we have what's called a gated set reset flip-flop. As you see, we still have an SR input, but an additional gate control signal only allows those inputs to pass through if the gate, aka enable pin, is in a high state. This is what makes it synchronous. So why not just have a device with a data input that could be high or low, and a gate that allows the state to change or not? Ah, well that's called a data or D flip-flop. By still using a gate input and then also connecting a data input to the set pin and an inverter that feeds the signal to drive the reset pin, we satisfy that requirement. The result is a flip-flop that only changes state when the gate is enabled, but only requires a single high-low input. The last flip-flop that I'm going to talk about today is the JK flip-flop. The JK is basically the same as the SR, so J is the equivalent of set and K is equivalent to reset. And we still have the enable pin, but it's usually called CP or clock or some such name, whatever's in the data sheet. And this allows synchronous operation. Where it differs is that if you recall the SR flip-flop when we bring both inputs high, there could be an unpredictable state at the outputs. Well, with the JK flip-flop, when both are high, the output toggles from the previous state. Why would you want to do that? The use of special toggle state doesn't seem obvious at first, but makes them useful in things like frequency dividers. As in, if we daisy chain them in series, the output of each is divided in half, which can make things like ripple counters. In fact, let's make one now so you can see what I'm talking about. This circuit is called a ripple counter, in which I'm using the 74LS76 negative edge triggered flip-flop. I've got three in series, and each Q drives the clock pulse of the next stage. Because all J's and K's are fixed to a high state, the only thing triggering each state is the clock input. This is technically called a modulus 8 counter, meaning it can count from 0 to 7, then rolls over. So what do we mean, it's a counter? I don't see any numbers being output to an LCD. That means if we apply a certain binary weight to each bit at each Q output, we can add those bits together and make a number out of it. So since each stage divides by 2, we'd expect the following timing diagram. Looking at each full clock cycle and adding up the bits, we can see that the circuit is indeed counting from 0 to 7 and then starting over. But timing diagrams are so boring. So I've built up the circuit on the bench over here and I wanted to show you what it looks like when this is actually happening in the real world. So let's take a look at it on the oscilloscope. All right, so here is our ripple counter. I've constructed this using two uh, 74LS76s and those are dual JK flip-flops with set and clear. There are two per IC, so I'm using um, the clock, my clock signal here is driving the input to one of those JK flip-flops, and then the Q output's driving the next stage, and the output Q of this one is driving the next stage of this guy. The outputs of each of these Qs are going to each of these LEDs. This is my least significant bit, this is my most significant bit. I have two, right, to the power of zero, two to the power of one, and two to the power of two. That gives me a weighted value of one, two, and four, just like binary, right? So I should see these count, and I can just add those weighted values together. Let me turn on my square wave generator here, and here we go, it's counting. So we have a one, two, and a four. All right, there you go, ripple counter from zero to seven, then recycling. Flip-flops are pretty cool. Well, that's it for this episode on flip-flops. As always, I hope you've learned something about the topic and somehow helped you in your project or career. There are many different applications when using flip-flops, and unfortunately I could only cover a few here today. But that's a good excuse to show me and or the Element 14 community something that you've made using flip-flops, or maybe you need help uh, using them in some project that you're working on. So, you can always click the link down in the description and we'd be happy to uh, communicate with you there. We can share information, share videos, schematics, all that kinds of good stuff, so please go down there. And of course, don't be shy, hit me up down in the comments and I will try to answer every single one. Alright, that's it for me. I'll see you next time.